Hello there everyone, uh, D-Square here. Uh, I know that we've been doing, uh, Volsker and I have been doing a podcast type show, but really uh, we're going to switch it around a little bit. i um, not going to put it anywhere else other than YouTube here so we can have a, a visual aspect as well. Uh, so this will actually be uh, Volsker and D-Square Talks. Uh, so me and my brother will definitely be uh, getting white and nerdy up in here. Um, so Volsker, how's it going tonight? Ah, it's going, man. It's going. Um, you know, we got uh, interesting tidbits that dropped right after we dropped last week's show. So, yeah. uh, it's getting uh, it's definitely some hot takes up in here. Yeah, all right. Yeah, definitely. The We'll be touching base on the uh, Spider-Man news, the Disney-Sony uh, split there. Uh, yeah, I've definitely got a little bit of uh, rage going on there about that. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely get into that. Um, other than that, how are you enjoying? So that you're enjoying that City of Bane series. Um, honestly, I haven't got a chance to dive into it just yet. Um, first thing I did was uh, made sure that Powers of X three was my first go to, gotcha. and holy shit! <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. So yeah, we'll definitely get right into that then. Um, yeah, it, it is. Uh, and I know it's like the lowest one, the lowest ones that I scored, but I, I don't really almost for a petty reason. So, yeah, Powers of uh, 10, number three, starts off with uh, Apocalypse, quote, I am mortal and I have no end. And then we see this scene is, you know, really kind of disturbing uh, where, you know, year 100. So that's uh, that's the first comment I'm going to make is, I guess, with the Powers of 10, They've been touching upon each of the uh, each of you know each of the time periods, so in this one they just stick with the year one hundred. Yes. So that it, it does kind of break form there, and so there's this temple of concordance, the church of ascendancy. It's these humans that you know we're, we're, they're worshiping the machines. They have this baby, you know, it's crying, and there's this little sphere thing that like shoots it in the eye, and then like half of its face like starts to become a, a machine similar to like the legacy or not legacy virus, but the uh, techno organic virus. So we, we get to see that um, they don't really dive into it because then um, four of the mutants of this time period then attack. And that's of course North, which is the Magneto looking guy, Zorn, uh, Rasputin and Cardinal. They, they attack. And that's where we get our first interesting chart here that I must have stared at for like a half hour. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> uh, yeah, big time. Uh, and I know I've covered some of this already, but, you know, just taking everyone through it once again here. So there's there's two charts. So we're going to stick with the one on the left because it's like Apocalypse on one and then mm -hmm. Mother or Akaba on the other. Mm -hmm. So it kind of shows this chart, Apocalypse and Samanur, which is his real name. Most people know that. Mutant. And then in brackets, external. Uh, so they are confirming that he's a, he's an external, which is basically meaning he he is truly immortal unless otherwise killed. Now, that's interesting enough. But then we see these four that he's got four horsemen, which you did actually mention uh, last show that it kind of threw tidbits that Wolverine may be war, right. Right, when, when Apocalypse says to him, you know, hey, or, or doesn't say to him, but says to somebody else, like, well, war, you know, has a, a habit of, and it's like, is he metaphorical? So, yeah, boom, mm -hmm. he, he is actually war. So, I thought that, even though I did think there was a, a chance that this was the actual Wolverine, mm -hmm. I thought that pretty much, other than him, everybody else was some sort of first, second, or third generation chimera. Which, of course, is the mutants that, like, you know, Sinister help uh, help to create. And that's not the case. It, so that is actually mm -hmm. James Howlett, Wolverine, pure blood. So Wolverine working for Apocalypse here, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Death, so this is actually Zorn, pure-blooded mutant. So the Zorn that's, you know, been around, um, that is him. And then North... Now, I said maybe some of these people were first generation. He's a second generation. Mm -hmm. Dane, Dane and Frost slash Frost is where he gets his mutant powers. And that's from Lorna Dane, who is Polaris. 
Magneto's daughter, although that was kind <laughs> of retcon, but it's generally accepted. That's they have pretty much the same powers. And then Emma Frost. And then Famine, which is really like I this completely comes out of left field for me because this is labeled as Krakoa slash cipher mutant symbiotic. Mm-hmm. And so literally Krakoa is not only a living island, but has now got like this symbiotic version of itself attached to Cypher. And yeah, so it's not Groot, it's not Black Tom Cassidy, it's Krakoa slash Cypher, which is weird. But really cool, because it's all about like interfacing with technology and knowing all the language. So it's a pretty useful uh, fucking person right there. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, there is Apocalypse and his four horsemen, one of which is Wolverine, the other Zorn, North, and uh, then Krakoa slash Cypher. And then we have this other part here, where it's Mother Akaba, who is a mutant, plur, uh, pure blood. We know this is, we know this is Moira. Um, I pretty much knew it before it was confirmed, and it's, it's confirmed later in this issue. Um, but so, then we get into her, I guess, quote-unquote, ho- horsemen. Which is mm-hmm. Bell, black, uh, black Brain Telepath, Mutant Hound. So she's one of those mutants. So she's not a Chimera at all. She's not a pure blood. She was one of those hound mutants that hunted other mutants. Um, you know, bred in the pits there on mm-hmm. Mars, I believe, if I remember correctly. And we saw her, um, again, she, she is now dead. Um mm-hmm. And she was the reason, she was she was how they were able to hide themselves from, from the machine. Uh, then we have Percival, uh, which is another pure blood mutant. Mm-hmm. Not a hound or anything like that, but straight like Wolverine and, and Zorn. Uh, so she's the one in like the green goo that, you know, we saw Nimrod put her there and then saw her there uh, later in the timeline. And then Rasputin and Cardinal are both confirmed to be. They're the only third chim- uh, third generation Chimeras, so I mm-hmm. thought it would be a lot more, but they're the only two. And, yeah, we know all about them. So that that's how this is all set up now. And we didn't know this before. We didn't know that Apocalypse was, you know, leading this this team of mutants. But, yeah, he's he's the boss now. Um, I mean, we know, I know we learned more about that on last issue, but this just kind of confirms the structure of it and and what everybody's make is and who they are correct and you also you had uh kind of slight dis- um let me say disputes but internal like conflict of whether that was the true apocalypse yeah. or the other version and this pretty much just solidifies the whole thing yeah oh yeah exactly because it's saying en sabanur so yeah en sabanur is the apocalypse it's not genesis or Evan, as you might know, no, it is is this is apocalypse for sure. Uh, then we get this interesting scene uh, where Nimrod is just trying to find out what the mutants stole. Uh, Omega Sentinel is like staring at a window and sees that the church is burning, and she goes to investigate. And <laughs> then yeah, he really didn't give a shit. He was just like. Yeah. No, no. yep, he's <laughs> he's completely hubris at this point. You know, he although he's an android, he's obviously displaying kind of a uh, human flaw. You know, is in 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 just not caring, being singular focused. So, uh, so yeah, we'll uh, so you know, she goes, she immediately you know shows up with a bunch of sentinels, and North is dead. Just boom. And I didn't know that at first. Um, I don't think the artwork is particularly great in that one itty bitty panel, which is why uh, this one was, you know, scored a little bit lower than the other ones. Uh, but yeah, so we we see now the, the mutants, you know, if you recall from last issue, they split up into teams, you know, uh, four of them, which is North, Rasputin, Cardinal, and Zorn, they are basically attacking this church we know to to make a distraction and so they're 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 having that fight and then we see apocalypse wolverine and then krakoa slash cypher in this like big computer archive uh they find this crystal looking thing which is obviously how the machines store their data uh they take it 
Um, of course, you know, this is, this alerts Nimrod instantly. Um, and literally it's like the next panel and then boom, Wolverine's, uh, almost disintegrated. <laughs> yeah. Nimrod just comes in and, and fucking, uh, does him not in, he's not dead cause he's Wolverine, but yeah. He's uh, messed up because <laughs> yeah. half of his body is basically just melted flesh and the other half is still intact. Yeah, yeah, and you're, like, seeing his skull and, like, it's just metal at that point. Um, it's crazy. And then Cardinal, he, he's dead. So it comes down to, um, with these two fights, you know, so Nimrod's, he's aware of that. And then, so we kind of cut back to the other, between the fight between Omega Sentinel and, at this point, Mm-hmm. Zorn and Rasputin. They're the only ones left alive. Yeah. And so Rasputin ends up pulling off Zorn's mask, which there's a black hole in there. So once that's mm-hmm. done, boom, it just fucks everything up, including Omega Sentinel. Just everything's dead at this point. And it's a cool moment for Zorn. Zorn's a really popular character. Um, I don't know too much about him, but, mm-hmm. you know, they definitely make it apparent, you know, he wants to die. He wants, you know, he's what's called a nihilist. And so you see, like, his shit-eating grin. Uh, you don't ever see his face ever before, but she pulls <laughs> off the mask, and he knows he's dying. Everybody else is going with him. So, yeah, he's got his shit-eating grin the whole way. That conversation was funny, too, because you could see, like, just in that kind of the interaction like Rasputin was like no I don't want to do this I will and he's just like no do it do it do it come on let's do it (laughs) (laughs) yeah exactly like just you know he's not lying one bit either um so then we you know then so then we basically cut back to the other team and so we see where Apocalypse basically decides okay I'm gonna sit back I'm gonna stay back here and fight Nimrod Wolverine you take this data uh, Krakoa is uh, is able to open up a portal, and he sends him back. Um, you don't know really where or what the you know where he's going. Wolverine does protest a little bit. You know, like, oh, you should yeah. do it. I'll stay back. But um, and so this is really a th- this is really strange to see Apocalypse in this way, Ex- especially since we know this is the actual Apocalypse. To see him like caring about another mutant um self-sacrificing this is just like you know 180 degrees from from where the character normally is what's crazy too um and up to this point we through a brief conversation we found out that the whole bit of info that they're taking was when nimrod was first booted online Right, so they're doing this whole last stand suicide mission because you know, the, yeah, exactly. The, 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 that information right there is so important to them. Which, like, for face value, you're just like, because I remember, uh, I mentioned that I was like, I wonder if they're trying to, you know, find out when Lesser came on or try to mm-hmm. prevent, you know, a greater from being born. And when this happened, I looked. I was like, what the fuck is going on? And then after you find out where Wolverine goes, then it's just like instantly like, oh shit. Yeah. Because he goes right to the sarcophagus, which was a, a, a big focus. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously as he's approaching the sarcophagus, we see that, you know, Apocalypse is putting up a good fight. But in the end, he's he's going to be defeated. But is it, he really going to be defeated, though, because he mm, can't die? Well, he can be actually killed, but here's the thing. So it turns out that they're giving this data to the person inside the sarcophagus, mm-hmm. which is Moira. Yes. And so that's you know kind of something that we speculated correctly on, is that she was in there. And it had something to do with the fact that the timeline that it showed in the last issue did Mm -hmm. not show her, you know, did not have her death on there. Both 9 and 10. Right. And and we assumed, or at least I assumed, that what we were seeing was Mm -hmm. in in the 10th life. 
Yeah. But I'm now getting the impression that everything we've seen, mm -hmm. other than the Charles Xavier with the Krakoa and all that, like, um, who knows? But nonetheless, mm -hmm. so I assumed all that stuff was in the Tenth Life, that it was an mm -hmm. inevitable future, and it turns out that it could be in this Ninth Life. I mean, we still don't know, but that's the, what's so crazy about this issue is it really kind yeah. of educates us on you know, we can't really presume anything because we can mm -hmm. skip to certain events in any timeline. Now, obviously, they're focusing then on the ninth because what their whole plan is, uh, you know, Moira had been damaged in battle. She mm -hmm. was in the sarcophagus because she was in stasis to pretty much preserve her for this moment, which mm -hmm. is to receive the data. And thanks to Krakoa and Cypher, they, like, engineered a way to, like, put a plant in her that would make it so once this crystal's inserted, she would... Like, immediate. Yeah, immediately know all this information. And then once she had it, Wolverine... I don't know if they originally planned it like this. I'm sure maybe Apocalypse planned it. But mm -hmm. Wolverine then had to do what he does best. Just guts her. And, and guts her. And then so ended the ninth life of Moira X. I shit you not when I'm reading this, like Haley was even just looking at me cause I was just dying <laughs> cause I'm just like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. And then instantly when first, when, um, they got the, uh, crystal, he got back there and one confirmed that she was in, uh, the sarcophagus. I was like, shit. D is right. Holy <laughs> hell. And yeah. then when he guts her and he goes, end of the night uh, life, I was like, that's when I was like, holy shit, I was right. So you really don't know what the hell's going on. And that's what brings me to my theory that House of Ten, I believe, is the current 10th gen um, life. I think that too. And then we have Powers of Ten, which was basically what made you think it was the direct future. But it's actually where uh, the ninth life ends, and then I think that's why they planned the weird release of the issues. Yeah. So then when we go back to House of Ten, it picks up, and I think that's where we're going to actually finish the tenth life. Or at least yeah. spawn from there, because, I mean, my big theory, and this pretty much proves it, is... This is a way to prevent the future from actually happening, at least this way again. Yeah. But I'm excited for next week's issue. Like, I was, uh, I felt this one was a little quick, but just what happened pretty much just changed every issue behind it. Yeah, it really changed your perspective. And you're right, it really wasn't much that happened. The only thing that happened was... Um, you know, half of a pot, well, not half of his pot, half of his team, but, you know, whatever. Half of the team went to attack the church uh, to mm -hmm. be a distraction. Uh, the other half uh, went to download the data, and then they got it to Moira so that she could die and take that data into her 10th life, knowing, and they would know uh, when Nimrod came online. But there's a there's there's kind of a I don't know how like that's not a surefire strategy I don't think because if it's going to be a different life he could come online in a, in a different way, which um, they proved in the um, mm -hmm. the uh, House of Ten issue where we knew about her lives because they even alluded to even if we stop one somebody ends up developing on their end right so. What's going to happen here? That's <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm with you. I think that I think that that this is that the the story you know with the pod people and Magneto and you know all that stuff that we began with with House of X number one. I'm with you. I definitely I, I'm like a hundred percent sure that that is her tenth life. Mm -hmm. And that's because if we go back to um, House of X number two, the one where we originally learned she was a mutant, mm -hmm. uh, we do see that on her 10th life um, at the age of 47, mm -hmm. uh, Moira Xavier, or Moira slash Xavier slash Magneto schism. Yes. So that's, you know, but what we don't know is, I guess, you know, we haven't really seen much of Moira in the present 
-hmm. when it comes to, you know, that House of X number one timeline. So, I don't know. But, yeah, I I, I can't wait for, for the next issue to come out. I mean, it's just completely completely intriguing this this has to be i mean it just it it opens up a, a whole world of of, of possibilities mm-hmm. you know i've heard rumors that people think the sixth life is the days of future past timeline so i'm really starting to see how he's big hickman the writer is just kind of weaving everything old and new you know kind of giving mm-hmm. everything some sort of purpose yeah. Which is really cool. Uh, but, you know, listen, next issue is going to be the sixth issue in this overall 12-issue series. So we're getting into the middle here. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll see if it ramps up or we'll see if we kind of settle into, okay, what what is the conflicts of consequence going to be here? Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely... Uh... It's going to be interesting, especially knowing that obviously they've already confirmed the next series or series. Yeah. Uh, six um, years. So I'm just, yeah, I'm curious to see where this is going. Yeah, it'll be interesting seeing what, what timeline are they in or is there a new timeline? Mm-hmm. You know, we haven't heard from Destiny yet, which is, uh, which is kind of uh, curious. Mm-hmm. You know, wonder if she's going to step in at any point, but. We will see. I'm still wondering if there's going to be any impact on any of the other uh, Marvel uh, heroes, like, based off this. Because we know Fantastic Four is here, so obviously there's other Marvel characters in this universe. Yeah, it looks like that they're possibly going to do, like, a big crossover event um, later this year that may tie stuff together, but I... I haven't looked too much into that yet, mm-hmm. but yeah, no, it's it's interesting to see how this actually affects the Marvel Universe at large, if it's somehow in its own pocket, or mm-hmm. if this is really going to do that for the Avengers and all the other comic books out there as well. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that. All right, so yeah, Powers of 10, number three, was really cool. Um, You know, yeah, it was a bit short, but a lot of cool information there. I've always loved Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just, I I, I like anything to do with him and to see him actually being portrayed, you know, as, as almost part, as a savior. You know, I know I said that in the video, but just to see him working like legit working with Wolverine and Zorn. Mm-hmm. Like those are good guys. <laughs> like, yep. so just to, the, it is really cool. Um, I originally got turned on to him, uh, from the, the X-Men animated series, but again, yeah. he's just out and out villain. But I, I just remember, you know, one of, uh, his cool lines, you know, look upon me and tremble. I'm apocalypse. The ever living. And I was like, Oh, uh, he's so fucking cool. <laughs> um, so just to see, just to see him just being relevant and, you know, he like smashed one of Nimrod's heads. Like it was cool. Cool shit. Yeah. Love the issue. Want to see more. Hopefully we get to see Apocalypse tie into it a little bit more, but I don't know. What's the new version of Apocalypse like? That's going to be a cool reveal. Yeah. Um, cause I mean too, like this is obviously in the future. Like, do they bring him in at like? Does he take over when he sees everybody else fail? Like, I don't know. does he get brought in, bring in early? Like, what's going to happen here? I mean, he doesn't. He's not going to remember shit. So yeah, he could just come in there and and want to wreck everything. True. Um, and I wonder if maybe we're going to see Xavier potentially do what he did with Magneto to show him like, no, look, we need you here. You're dead. That's possible. That's a good point. Um, maybe, you know, and, and Moira may know something. May, Moira may know, I know what I can say to him to where he'll be like, okay, let me listen to this. Um, yeah. Or they may have devised something already because um, Apocalypse got a lot of cool technology at his disposal. Mm-hmm. All right, good stuff. Well, let's talk about some news. And, yeah, we're kind of late to the mm-hmm. game here because it happened about five minutes after we were done with our last uh, talk show, but so, God damn it! So <laughs> Spider Man is not going to be, at, at least as of right now. Yeah, 
not in the MCU anymore. They no longer Sony and Marvel uh, no longer have a deal going anymore. Um, before I, I guess, rage about what I want to talk about, you know, what what do you think? What do you have to say? I'm torn. So I keep seeing rumors. There's obviously, you know, two sides to every coin. A lot of there's a lot of people that are kind of split down here. And what I mean by that is I know like people at work, people are pissed off. Then there's always the people like, well, Disney's being greedy. Disney's being greedy. Even um, Stanley's daughter said, no, Disney's being greedy. Screw Marvel. Screw Disney. They never reached out to us. Sony should do something with this and keep it. So you like, you don't know what side to really go for. My issue or my issue with this is the fans lose because right mm-hmm. now he's being built to be the leader of the Avengers. No, that that's exactly, that's exactly my problem is I could give a shit about who's being greedy or, or, or the fucking deal. Although to be honest with you, I'm not going to say anyone's being greedy, but what the fuck did Disney think? That they yeah. were just going to make movies, hand Sony a bunch of money, and then Sony, like, say, nah, you're right, you should have more. So, Disney decided to fucking do this. And just like you said, they made him, like, the de facto, like, next fucking Tony Stark. Okay, I'm not even a big Spider-Man fan, so I'm not even crushed because I won't see Spider-Man anymore. I'm crushed because... They brought him into the MCU, made him a, a huge part of it, and now they and now that they can't even reference it, reference it if they want to. Yeah. And I I didn't like the fact I didn't like the whole Spider Man, uh, Tony Stark. Okay, Spider Man's got all sorts of Tony Stark armor and shit. Mm-hmm. Like that should have Tony Stark shouldn't have made Spider Man armor for like five six movies. Like they mm-hmm. really so. Yeah, so, like, and, and isn't happy, like, dating uh, Aunt May. Um, yeah. They, they introduced <laughs> the multiverse in, in in Spider-Man Homecoming, although I know it was, like, a ruse, but nonetheless. So, yeah, that's fucking ridiculous that yeah. they did that, and they didn't, like, I just assumed that they were like, okay, we, we're, 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 we're good for at least ten years. I would never, never fucking assumed that it, it, it could go away in just a couple of years. Yeah. And that's really fucked up. It is. Um, and when you dive more into what the hell's going on, like, and I get it. Do In an aspect of, like you mentioned, you know, it's just figures and big organizations going after you know each what? other. But all you have to say, all, all I had to hear was, Disney or whatever, Marvel, they get all the merchandising shit, plus 5% of opening weekend. Well, as of right now, from what I've read, Disney only gets 5% of every dollar. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I but um, So Sony forks out the movie. <clears throat> they produce it with uh, Kevin being the executive producer and given his guidance – to make sure it doesn't come off mm-hmm. shitty, for example, Venom. I liked it, but yeah, let's face it, the quality is not what MCU is. Listen, Venom, Venom in itself, like I've got a whole other fucking rant about yeah. that because that's the whole reason, maybe not the whole reason, mm-hmm. but the, it certainly grew Sony's balls. It, you know, I'm not trying to disparage anybody, but the fact that people went to that fucking movie in droves, that also has a part in this. Yeah, um, which that is kind of my positive side on this if we don't get spider-man and mcu anymore but they from there's mixed rumors that disney wanted to 50 50 split down the middle co-produce and get 50 percent of the benefits so 50 50 that way sony doesn't fork all the production costs and disney gets more than five percent of every dollar or whatever the hell it was okay i agree with that then there was rumors that disney wanted to are currently trying to basically buy the rights for seven movies. Then there's rumors where at least trying to buy the rights to allow him to be in the new Avengers. 
while Sony is sitting back and thinking, well, everybody's excited for Venom versus Carnage. Why not actually implement Spider-Man now? Because Tom Holland is still under contract for at least two more movies. To Sony, not Marvel or Disney. Yeah. Um, but then on the flip side, Sony only owns the rights to the movies, does not own merchandise, does not right. own games, and does not own TV series. So technically, they could do an MCU TV series like they're doing with the other ones and have Spider-Man as a TV show instead of a movie. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's in like, in like you said, the merchandising alone, like go into a, go into a school or like just pay, start paying attention to little kids. Like seriously, every fifth one has like a Spider-Man t-shirt, <laughs> like Spider-Man merchandise alone is worth it. Not to mention the fact that basically that means Sony is although making movies and making money on it. It's basically a billboard for your other movies. So yeah. there's, yeah, this is this is completely unnecessary. And again, I'm not saying somebody is greedier than the other. I just don't get it. And the consequences far outweigh any financial gain. Um, you know, MCU can shit something out, and mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's going to make a ton of money. And so. And it wouldn't be so bad if, okay, Spider-Man's not going to be in the movies anymore, but they literally can't even mention him. Yeah, it's it, it kills the continuity. Um, the whole, you know, the whole, honestly, since Civil War. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's He's a major yeah. fucking deal. Um, and then, <laughs> this just makes me laugh, but you know, here's the easy way to solve it. Disney just fucking buy Sony Pictures. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like you bought everybody else at this, at this point. point. Yeah, no, you are the Empire Disney. Get out your fucking Death Star, point your goddamn laser at the planet Sony, and say we fucking doing this. Um, What's crazy too, though? Like I I read something yesterday, and this is absurd. Like I get it. Give them five or six years, they can make the money back. But you know what is it? Um, back in early 2000s and like 2010 when they bought star wars and uh mm -hmm. marvel they were like four billion a piece so <laughs> rumors have it is sony offered to sell the rights to spider-man back for over 10 billion dollars i did <laughs> one character i did hear that yeah yeah <laughs> that's that is crazy that is so crazy but that's like that's that's basically selling saying he's not for sale yeah. Or, yeah, or you're looking to retire. <laughs> Ridiculous. It yeah, is. It's... Um, hopefully we get something worked out soon, because it's, it's pretty damn shitty. I just, for as much as they integrated him into the MCU and made the character so important so fucking quick, mm -hmm. I really did assume that they had this shit na nailed down for quite some time. And it's really disappointing that they don't. It is. And the whole, you know, the whole issue that broke out last month, like, oh, it has to hit over a billion or Sony's going to strip the rights back. And, mm -hmm. and it's the number one biggest selling Sony film of all time. And it's then this shit breaks down. And it's just, I mean, if they can't be, <laughs> if, if Spider-Man can't be in the MCU, I will hold out hopes now that Sony will do their own shit. We can actually get a spider verse movie because they're the ones that did Toby are the ones that did, uh, what's his face, the shitty, amazing ones. And now Tom Holland. So we actually could potentially get a spider verse movie, which would be badass. Yeah. I'm, but that could have happened either way, but yeah, I mean, it's not saying they won't do interesting stuff with it. Uh, you know, I'm not here to I'm not even saying I know that anything that Sony does is going to be shitty. Um, although Most of the time that's it is. likely <laughs> going to be the case, but I'm not even saying that. I'm just saying, why the fuck was he so integrated uh, and, and poof, gone. Yeah, yeah. 
You don't want another Andrew Garfield. No, sir. <laughs> well, speaking of Disney uh, and the Empire, so we got to see uh, some uh, sizzle reel, I believe they call it. Uh, you're more of a, yep. a movie buff uh, than mm -hmm. myself, and some of the some of the images were from uh, past movies. Definitely um, from the very beginning. Yes, but there were a couple that were from the new movie. And yeah. so we, well, we, we get to see some really cool stuff. Actually, we, we get to hear the emperor, uh, talking about, and I'm paraphrasing here, it being, uh, your final fight or something like that. Uh, we see this flash, like there's this big storm going on. And in the flashes, you can see mm -hmm. these hundreds of, of star destroyers, uh, in the sky. Um, Rumors, of course, being that 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 thunder, that storm that you actually see uh, in in the background of another scene, which is Ray with her blue lightsaber and Kylo Ren with his red, uh, you know, his red lightsaber. They're fighting, and that that same same storm is in the background. Um, theory is that that's actually. Uh, emperor using the force power force storm which is like the most powerful like dark force uh dark side power uh you can wield oh shit um anywho uh but then what we see is ray mm -hmm. in a black robe and she has this she well she's it's a double-ended lightsaber but it's it's one you know look it up it's cool but it's one that's like it looks like two lightsabers together like side like by side blade. right like a switch blade and she like flicks it and then th and it, it switches over to like a, a double bladed red lightsaber mm -hmm. holy fuck <laughs> yeah i have some theories or theory i don't know if it's plural or singular but obviously that's suggesting that ray goes to the dark side which we have seen this before. Well, you're more familiar with the uh, the books than I am, but even Luke's done that in the Legacy series. Yes, um, and, and he did that to get close to the Emperor, which mm -hmm. you know did come back to life through his clones and his um, soul transfer technique. You know, a bunch of dark side mumbo jumbo but they do really cool shit like that so yeah he did and he he actually did succumb so this suggests that ray also succumbs to the dark side which is supported by the fact that in the last jedi when she was uh with luke and they're looking and there's a dark side cave that they're looking at and you know she's attracted to it and it freaks mm -hmm. him out so yeah now how does that happen I don't know, but uh, as we also know that uh, what's his name too also has had light side battles while he's on the dark side. Yeah, so I'm wondering if we're going to pull a switch Rue here where they flip sides. That was so that that's that's one of my theories is that. Well, okay, so my main theory is that that is the emperor has possessed Ray. Mm -hmm. or, and that's why I'm saying I don't know if this is singular, I know it's got something to do with the Emperor. I know that much. It is either yeah. the Emperor that has possessed Rey, or he has possessed a clone of Rey, or mm -hmm. Rey is a clone, specifically bred for the purpose of housing the Emperor's uh, dark side, force soul, whatever you want to call it. Huh. I didn't even fucking think of that. That's and wow. then yeah, it could be Kylo Ren that needs to take him out. So I don't <laughs> know. I don't think her. So I guess the one prediction I can be fluid on is that I don't think she willingly succumbs to the dark side. Yeah, I think she is possessed, or that is a clone. So there's a possibility there's going to be two rays floating around at some point because mm -hmm. he because he can just have a whole facility of cloned mm -hmm. rays or whatever. Um, and yeah, we, it was confirmed. We will know her true parentage in this movie. 
So I'm wondering if that was the whole big ordeal that she was literally a clone being raised by smugglers and, yeah. you know, drug addicts, which kind of was alluded to in <clears throat> Last Jedi. You know my opinions on that movie. Um, <laughs> I maintain which, it's good, but I know people... My issue is the fact that what they did with Luke. You know, he was... Yeah, he has the the wine for the uh, the Skywalker cry and the wine and, you know, pity, pity. But he was, you know, he wouldn't even do it to save his dad. Why would he, like, why would he go cranky and just hate the world now? Like, it just, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense of his character. And even him himself, Hamill, told Brian Johnson that that's not how he should be. And... Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I didn't like the whole he's bitter because him and Kylo had that falling out or, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know, Luke is a serious badass. Uh like I have some comics. They're they're precursors to the Force Unleash. Um where he so there's these things called force trees. And mm -hmm. this is um, so this is right after the fall of the Empire, maybe, I don't know, a couple of years, five years afterwards. I mean, the Empire's still around, certainly not the Empire, but, yeah. you know, there are Imperial remnants all over the place. And Luke just straight, um, he's going to go on a mission. He just needs a pilot. And he grabs Poe Dameron's mom. And he's like, hey, I just need you to be, I just need you to come with me, like pilot me to this place. I, I just got to go, I got to go get some things. And then when it turns out, he's like, yeah, um, yeah, we're just going to go to this Star Destroyer. Like they just straight go to a Star Destroyer. They go in it. Luke by himself with this pilot just decimates everyone. I mean, not everyone, but just at will goes into this Star Destroyer that's chock full of fucking Imperials and just goes in it and, the, and he just, cause he wants to get two force trees that they have. Mm-hmm. So he just decimates everybody. Like, no one can fucking touch him. He's a super badass Jedi. Just to get these Force Trees, he takes one. He gives the other to Poe Dameron's mom, mm -hmm. um, which is why I think, which is why Poe, I know, I know Poe Dameron is Force sensitive or. Oh, very. It's or, pretty much, yeah. And it's probably because of that tree. Um, Because, yeah, that was, that's when he was really little. Like, yeah. He may not even be born yet. That might be when they first got together, when they first find out she's pregnant. So mm -hmm. he grew up like right next to a forest tree. So he, yeah, is supreme badass. And so, yeah, for him to just be kind of a hermit on this planet and um, all cranky and anti-Jedi, it, it doesn't make sense. And that's my biggest issue. And that's why that movie, like, it killed it for me. Like, I, I can, you know, the comedy, whatever, but... You literally ruined Luke's character, and especially if you're looking at the comic, which is canon, goes into Force Awakens. Like, so he's this badass, and then all of a sudden he's just gone. Like, right. really? Like, wouldn't you fight like you did for your father to try to bring Kylo back? Like, yeah, it doesn't make sense why he's that disenfranchised with the Jedi. It really doesn't. So... If they didn't do that, I probably would have enjoyed the movie. But when you have a director who doesn't care about Star Wars and who hasn't even seen most of them take over for Abrams, like, yeah. come on. I don't know why they do that. I really don't know why they do that because they do it with comic book movies, too. Mm -hmm. um, they get these, I mean, I I don't know. if it, Is there really that few directors and writers that are actually into this stuff? I but yeah, they shouldn't do that. They should always, when you're doing a sequel or a new series that is, you know, comes from a, another beloved series, man, they should definitely yeah. have some nerds on the staff that's going to be like, <laughs> like, don't do that. They're going to get pissed. Oh, it gets better. He's given his own fucking trilogy now to yeah, do from scratch. Like, come on, don't do it. <laughs> don't yeah, do I know. It. I love Star Wars, but uh, you know. Because I love Force Awakens. Like, I know a lot of sure. people, oh, it's just a rehash. But you know what? It was a rehash to get the new generation sparked about it. And it created a mass following of a younger generation, older fans. And then you bring out this. 
like so i'm excited to a small sliver because i stole after last jedi have yeah but with abram's back he has the ability to basically retcon whatever he wants i figure most of the luke stuff's gonna be wreck because i've heard that this is i've heard that luke's gonna be in the movie he and, is. I mean, I'm going to, I mean, and I guess my first assumption is going to be in a force ghost, but something tells me that it's just going to be some sort of, uh, Luke trickery. Oh no, I'm not really dead. I'm here. Maybe um, he transferred his soul or it could have transferred his soul or he, he might be a force ghost, but just like, no, I don't, we'll see. Um, you know, I agree. I still like the, I, I like, I, I like, uh. The Last Jedi, though, I really do. Um, just, I, I guess just maybe, I, I just love that scene where, like, Kylo and Rey are fighting those Imperial, uh, those Imperial guards oh, uh, yeah. with the four staffs, and they're, uh, you know, she lets go her lightsaber, or lets it fall to her other hand, ignite, like, that was just a really, really cool scene. I like the Poe Dameron stuff. I just, um, but I get it. I get, I get where people are coming from. Well, I, you know, I am weird. I also like episode one. The only one I kind of hate on a little bit is Attack of the Clone episodes two, but the, <laughs> like the Yoda, everybody does. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? The Yoda fight at the end was really fucking cool. Yeah. Um, so it saves it for me. One is tolerable. I mean, the only issue that a lot of people have is uh, what uh, young Anakin, uh, whatever the actor's name. I know he's like a crackhead or something now. Yeah. Aiden. Um. Yeah, what was his name? But Maul, I mean, we all know Maul was underused, which was pretty cool that he came back canon-wise into the series, the cartoon. Um, but out of the prequel trilogy, to me, uh, was it Revenge of the Sith is still my favorite. Yeah, no, that was that was uh, that was definitely good. Um, yeah, I give Episode One. A lot of, I guess I, I get really nostalgia for it because it was the first one to come out for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so just, you know, to see Jedi, you know, not just waving their sword around, but doing flips and kicks and force powers yes. and melting through robots and stuff, or droids rather. Um, it was just, I don't know, I was just loving it. And then, of course, yeah, Darth Maul. So yeah. he's... uh. He's one of my favorites for sure. Which, speaking of, wasn't he also the guy who played uh, Toad? Yeah, yeah, Ray Parks. Yeah, yeah, played Toad, yeah. Yep. Just to kind of throw in a little uh, X-Men <laughs> there. <laughs> little, yeah. Um, he was also the stuntman for Raiden in uh, Mortal Kombat, I believe. Oh, really? For the first one? Um, First or second? I can't remember. Well, you know... You... I, he, both both the Raiden actors weren't exactly spring chickens, so I, I assume. Um, <laughs> or Christopher Lambert, I can't remember the second guy. You didn't do as well. Christopher Lambert was cool in the first Mortal Kombat, but the second Raid wasn't so uh, wasn't that hot. Oh, he's also Snake Eyes in GI Joe. Did you know that? Yes, I did not. Well, although I didn't, I didn't remember it, but yes. Yeah, no, he's. He's badass, like, yeah. I mean, and that's the only way, bringing it back to the X-Men, that's the only way Toad would ever be cool. If you watch that first X-Men movie, like, he's like, he's winning the fight against the X-Men. Toad would never do that in the comics. Like, Toad would get his ass kicked fairly quickly. Because uh, his powers suck. Mortal Kombat 2? is who he was a stunt double for Raiden, but he was also Raptor and Tark Baraka. So he, oh, he actually did both. Yeah. Raptor or Reptile? It says Raptor. Raptor number three, and they call him hmm. Tarkatin, and then in parentheses it says Baraka. So yeah, because didn't they do the like the weird, they didn't actually call him Baraka, he was just there. Yeah, pretty much, it, yeah. yeah. So he did... A fight double, stunt double, and he was also on screen. Holy shit, dude. Yeah, he got paid in the 90s for sure. Uh, 
like early 2000s. Oh, he was in Snake Eyes. He was Snake Eyes for both of them. Huh. Well, no, he is the premier, like, movie martial artist for sure. But, I mean, he's never in a role where, like, you see his face, though, it seems like. Oh, shit. Star Wars The Clone Wars live-action TV series. He is returning as Maul. That is awesome. Oh, shit. I hope that is true. Yeah, he was, uh, I haven't seen it yet, but he was also Maul and Solo. Oh, yeah, that's right. He is in Solo. I always forget that. I always forget that he's actually in Solo. Shit, man. If I would have known that, I would have actually seen that movie in the theater. Yeah, I still gotta watch it, but... (sighs) It's, it's, you know, it's, it's okay. It's not bad, but it's... They didn't... They didn't do what they didn't do all like all the cool solo shit like like they never like the dice okay you know the dice that like hang in the Millennium Falcon and he's yeah. he's got them in solo like you would have thought well I don't want to spoil it for you I, I don't know what I'm doing but it's just it didn't it's fine but they could have flushed out the Han Solo lore a lot more and it just didn't and I thought that's what we were gonna get more of. Oh, that's where that happened. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's where he got those from. But no, it's totally not like that at all. So it was, uh, and that's what a lot of people uh, I've heard talk about is it was, it was okay. It's kind of like more of a just a buddy movie, basically. Like, yeah. Um, but it was definitely no Rogue One, which Rogue One, like you want prequel how shit gets set up, like that movie is. Ideal. Yeah. Yeah. No, that movie is awesome, and the fact that and. And they really did a good job with that because they had Vader in it. Um, mm-hmm. In fact, that he's scene in, was badass. Yeah, he's in the last scene of the movie, and like, yeah, it leads right up to, you know, where they start chasing the the Tantum Four ship uh, with Leia on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the fact that they really kind of stuck to their guns, everyone fucking dies. Yeah. Like I remember seeing it with my wife, and she's like, "Oh, so they're all just dead." <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's what all, happened back in the seventies. That's what he said. <laughs> all of all of this was just to get a signal out, right? Exactly. I mean, it, it, exactly it. Like so, but obviously she didn't. Yeah. Wasn't that big of a moment for her, which is fine. Uh, my favorite part of that movie, though, other than uh, Vader's quick cameo, was honestly Donnie Yen's character. Oh, the blind force monk. Like. <sighs> That he, like just as a martial artist because we've talked about this it man like he, that dude is just talented yeah oh yeah that was a, that was a cool character too i actually would like to see more if they ever do like side stories or anything because there's rumors that okay was is he just a monk was he just protecting was he maybe actually a jedi at one point and then when the jedis were getting killed he you know went into hiding yeah. that way like what is his story yeah, I don't I don't think he was ever a Jedi because um and I really do need to start collecting like the Vader comics because he really that's really all he fucking does between like Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope is just just straight hunting down any sort of Jedi remnant. Yeah. Um so I don't know, he didn't seem like he was that much in hiding. Fair point. Otherwise, Vader would have got, or Vader would have got him. But uh... all right, well, I think that pretty much does it for us tonight. Uh, join us, well, really next time. Uh, we'll talk through, of course, I'm sure the next issue, uh, the next X Men issue. Mm-hmm. Um, is we get we get another carnage between now and then? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, potentially, because I know. Carnage versus Deadpool just came out. And I just grabbed that, so I think we do get Carnage two in Venom this week, because uh, Venom seventeen is also one of the side stories in it, side issues. So that's going to be interesting. Seeing the fact that Venom is a main part of the main story. Yeah, that's jank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they need the way they do. Uh, yes, uh, Absolute Carnage uh, number two. Mm-hmm. Absolute Carnage, 
Lethal Protectors, number one. Absolute Carnage, Miles Morales, number one. And, uh, let's see, Amazing Spider-Man, number 28. Avengers 23. I need to catch up on that. I have, like, the first graphic novel of this new Avengers run, and I haven't even read through it yet for some reason. Uh, but, yeah. How many are we getting this week? Um, Absolute Carnage, number okay. two. Uh, Absolute Carnage, Lethal Protectors, number one. Absolute Carnage, Miles Morales, number okay. one. Okay. I, I can deal with three. I, I ferment there. I was like, don't shit. Don't tell me the other one. I mean, <laughs> so. the, I mean, the only other thing is Amazing Spider-Man number 28. I don't know if that has anything to do with. Let me see. Let me try and look at the cover here. And this. Uh... Yeah, no, it doesn't look like it has anything to do with. Uh, All right, anything. good. This Avengers uh, does have Wolverine in it, which is interesting, kind of, because we talked about that scene, how Wolverine's in this one, but he's also in House of Ten. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, they spread Wolverine around everywhere. Well, I kind of can't blame them uh, for the movies then, because, I mean, they kind of throw him around, and he is, let's face it, probably the the most popular mutant Oh, oh, by sh for sure. And and to be honest with you, he's not even that great of an X Men. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. He's awesome. I like Wolverine. And when I think of X Men, I think of Wolverine. But the only reason he's on the team is because like Professor X basically mind controlled him to do so mm -hmm. at first. And you know the X Men have this policy of like you know oh we don't kill you know Wolverine kill whenever he wants to. <laughs> he'll, I mean, he'll just leave the X-Men real quick. I mean, literally, he's done that. He does it all the time. Anytime he wants to just go kill somebody, he's like, ah, I'm out of here. Does his thing. Maybe goes on the X-Force or something like that. But then, yeah, when he's done, he's like, all right, I'm back. Don't ask me what I did. <laughs> oh, shit. Did you see this? What's up? A little bit of spoiler here, but... uh. House of Ten issue five has Apocalypse on the cover walking through a marsh. What is that? Wow. Well, yeah, I yeah, I know you're kinda new to comics, so um Unless it's just a like a variant cover. Well, it, even if it's not a variant cover, that's kind of an annoying thing about some comics. Like the cover will have absolutely little to do with Yeah, fair with point. what actually happens. Like the they stupid pull, action figure ones. Like I have um I Eric from Comics Are Go in Leary, Ohio. Uh, he he actually he he knows I like Colossus, so he saved me an Iron Man comic. And the whole reason is because it's an Iron Man comic, but Colossus is on the cover. But he's not in the comic at all. That's badass. But yeah, just haha, -ha, you know, metal skin, Iron Man. It was cool. It's actually cool. What the cool picture of Colossus? Oh, that is a... Well, speaking of Colossus, you won't be a fan of this cover. Um, Powers of X issue 6 literally has uh, Mara McTaggart standing over dead bodies everywhere with oh, Colossus being the one that she's standing on. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. What the... F All right. Yeah, I have I... no idea where this is going. <laughs> yeah. I need to get the variant cover of powers of x3 with um colossus on it and magic i didn't see that at the shop so i may have to order that yeah i had to actually have them start a file because i got there and yeah they're yeah that's the best way to go steam that's the best way to go all righty well that is where we're going to end it for tonight um See me back here on the channel, of course. I'll be reviewing the uh, next X-Men. Uh, what is this one? House of X number three, which should be a doozy. We'll be officially midway through the House of X Powers of Ten series. And um, we'll also... Um, I may do, you know... I, I know I don't do, like, uh, spoiler videos uh, usually for the comics. But if something just rocks my world you know something mm -hmm. i just got to talk about you know I'll, I'll i'll do a 
uh, video, but we're always talking about it more in depth here uh, with Falsker, kind of guide him through it and get the newbie perspective. So join us here uh, in a week or so. We'll do another uh, Volsker and D-Square talks. Um, so Volsker, have a good night. You as well, sir. All right, everyone out there, have a good one. Thank you so much.